Texas. Today, I want to stick with the NFC. Both Brock Purdy and Jared Goff spoke this week about where their head is at, respectively, heading into a title game. Brock talked about the difference in his mentality compared to this time last year. And Jared talked about facing his childhood team and wearing Joe Montana's number with a trip to the Super Bowl on the line. You know, thinking about last year or anything. So, um, you know, for me, obviously, I got hurt last year and it sucks. That was part of the game. Um, you know, going into this game, I'm healthy, feel good. And, um, you know, I think for all of us, we're obviously hungry and, and want to get to the next game after. So um, we've got to handle business and take it one play at a time and allow everything to happen for a reason. So The whole story of it, I, I chose, or my dad really chose it for me in some ways and because I was too young to even really watch Joe Montana. And so I just, it was my number growing up and, you know, yeah, I wore it because my dad said, hey, that's Joe Montana's number, you should pick it. And I'm like, all right, and, <laughs> and chose it and, and just continued to wear it. But no, I, I'm a, obviously a huge fan of his and, um, yeah, it'll be fun. I don't, I don't have any. I've played there a ton of times wearing that number and um, didn't seem to matter. He's like, what about it? Stop peppering me with questions about this. He was not having all of the questions about growing up a Niners fan. He's locked in on the weekend. But the storylines here do extend past these two, the guys leading the teams, the quarterbacks, and the intrigue there. Let's dig into some of the other factors that could end up deciding which of these teams ends up in Vegas. And I want to start with the Lions. If the Lions go back into the Bay and pull off an upset special here, a special burger, they're going to make plays on the defensive side of the ball as well. And if I'm looking at one guy who can be that playmaker it is cj gardner johnson cj gj oh i finally got it right on the first try since returning from a peck injury guys this is just three measly weeks ago he's got two interceptions in that time including this one sorry baker we love you last week oh man that ended up with CJ flipping Baker the ball back. Yeah, he got in his face a little. Okay, we get it, CJ, we get it. His talent for instigating gets so much attention and it's certainly a part of his game and it works effectively. But let's not let that cloud or let us lose sight of how freaking good of a player he is. He is a game changer out there. And let's also not forget, he was involved in knocking off the Niners in the NFC title game last year when he was with the Eagles, he knows how to make big plays in big games, and that's special. And if Debo Samuel does play, which is looking and sounding like he might or should, or I hope he does at least, there's a little something extra happening here, too. CJ called Debo out all the way back in October. Do you remember this? Remember talking about the potential of seeing each other in a playoff matchup? Debo had thoughts on it, too. Take a look. Did you see the IG Live? Yeah, that was comedy. Can we play it? <laughs> Will you get mad if we play it? Oh. No. It looks like you about to cry. Bro, listen, don't be friendly when you see me. Because you be so flashy. You better hope, well, you better hope all that talking you be doing when we see y'all, whatever round it may be, because I can guard you. You can't run routes. You're a running back. You're a running back. I ain't going to sit here and play with you, little boy. Just because you got a little bag, people gave you a little clout. Man, you ain't nothing, bro. Stop playing. It just sounds like he mad I got a little a little bag and a lot of money and nobody knows who he is. I, I, I remember that interview very well because I really just wanted to know what, like, what, I wanted him to tell me like what play on the field at some point or what, where that came from because it was sort of this like rogue uh, Instagram thing that happened on CJ's side. And I, you know, I have, of course, just want everybody to get along and be friends. This will be something to keep an eye on just for fireworks, I think. And the winner of this battle, uh, I think, between the two of them, if Debo plays, will, um, you know, potentially be the game changer and the MVP of this matchup for their respective team. Um, and I will say this, whether Debo does or doesn't play, there is another guy on the Niners squad that I just want to be ahead of this and that is going to be a key here. And it is somebody named Brandon Ayuk, somebody who Hamilton texts me about more than anyone else. It's true. He's always, listen, if Debo doesn't play, they're going to need to pick up some of the slack. And even if Debo is out there drawing attention, Ayuk's going to capitalize on his opportunities. No one, no one does a better job doing that this year than Brandon Ayuk. Here's what I mean. And I'm talking literally. He ranked seventh in the league with over 1,300 receiving yards this year. Seventh, despite ranking just 36 with 105 targets. That efficiency is crazy. He does the most. 
That gives him just under 13 yards of target this season, the third most we've ever seen in a single season since targets became an official stat back in 2009. Um, and by the way, Deshaun, we see you up there. Deshaun Jackson's on there. He's joining the show in a minute. Ayuk is having a career year, and there are plays to be made against this Lions secondary. They are. They're 27th against the pass this season. And to sort of underscore how important this is going to be even more, the Niners are a perfect 6-0. They do not lose when he scores a touchdown. They're six and five in the games he doesn't. If Ayuk goes off, scores a touchdown, the Niners are going to be tough to beat at home against anybody.